Hey everyone, welcome along, Nigel here again. Uh, before we start, please remember to um, hit that subscribe button down there and uh, like, dislike. If you do dislike, please tell me why. Gonna look at some B52 stuff today. I've got the brand new Model Collect G version here, which I've done an inbox review on, which you can see if you if you look in my other videos. Um, I've also done their B2 bomber as well, um, which is a nice little kit. Um, <clears throat> being that this is brand new and just come out, I thought I'd look at some of the other stuff that's been available for a while and do a comparison of the three kits side by side. 25 years ago, AMT brought this kit out, the B-52 Stratofortress, and they did an H and a G version. Um, they've got issues as well, but they were a little step on, in modelers' terms anyway, from the from the Revell kit, monogram kit, because they had uh, scribe detail, um, they were a G and a H version, monogram only ever did the D. Um, they had scribe panel lines, um, they had no Bombay detail whatsoever, no flaps, uh, no spoilers, but they had a better detailed cockpit and some armament, they had the, uh, the cruise missiles and stuff on them. So, yeah, it was another option. Any better, any worse, I don't know, you decide. So that was 25 years ago. 50 years ago, Ravel, well, Monogram came out with this kit. And this is a newer version of that, of that kit. Um, this one bakes, dates back to the early 2000s, I believe. I've done a review of the 1968 original Monogram release in the original box. If you look back at my videos, you'll see that. It's, um, it's quite funny, actually, to see how kits used to be produced. But basically the mouldings, other than some clean up and a couple of holes changed, um, the mouldings are exactly the same. It's even the same kind of plastic in this version. There are many versions in between. If you look on scale mates you'll see them all, but they're all fundamentally from the same moulds. And even when you look at some parts on here, you'll see that on the mould it actually says um, part number such and such in silver and then it's a different part number in grey. So some kits were silver, some were grey, some were green. So what I'm going to do, get these into these boxes and compare the kits, major components side by side and then we'll have a quick discussion on the smaller intricacies of each one and then I'm no expert but I've got a lot of experience of modelling I'm going to give my opinion on which I think is the best kit for accuracy, the best kit for the builder and the best kit for overall value for money so um, without further ado let's get on with that Right, the comparison of the three kits fuselage halves. What I've done here, I've got all three kits, is the AMT, the Model Collect, and the Ravel monogram. And I've sellotaped them to a A3 cutting board. And what I've done, I've used the Bombay as the lining up feature. So the Bombay front edge lines up with this line here. And lo and behold, if you do that, the wing leading edges line up. Um, the model collect one is a bit short because it's the wrong shape. We discussed that in another video. But if we look the paddle lines here, they line up perfectly, the ones up the back of the windscreen. And the noses, you can see the error in the model collect there. It should be the same length as this one. It should be the same shape. And you can see that the, the nose is too short. It's it's too bulbous but again that's another video but you can see that the Ravel fuselage is, is shorter as it should be because that has the D nose cone so looking at all three we can see that the model collect has an incorrect um, leading edge on the wing but it has far superior detail and scribing and also I know for a fact that this kit the AMT kit, the scribing on the, the panel lines is a little fictitious and this kit doesn't line up with the scribing so I'm assuming this one is correct. But overall I think we have to assume that the Ravel monogram 50 year old kit is probably the most accurate in, well, in every way. It's just a shame it has raised panel lines. So moving along, if we look at the back end um, we can see here 
that the tail is also in error. Um, we can see here that the the rear end of the tail of the uh, aircraft as depicted in the model collect kit is entirely wrong. It's basically the same as the D model but with the um, with the canopy fared over whereas it should be um, more like the, the shape I've just drawn on here. The radar has moved forward and it doesn't have this pod here. The length is correct for an early G. Um, later G's had the extension as this H has got, which puts it about 10 millimeters longer overall. Um, this could actually do a bit a little bit longer, I think. But um, yeah, so if you're going to do the Old Crow Express, which the box front and the decals depict, then this needs to have the extension, and it should also have other changes as well to the whole aircraft. So. Basically, with this model collect kit, if you're fussy about accuracy and, and depicting the correct time and everything that the that the um, livery depicts, then you can't build this model out of the box. Well, on the ANT kit, it would appear that the rear undercarriage bay is slightly further forward, and also the bomb bay is slightly shorter. So, you know, I also feel that this is probably incorrect here. This ribbing around the underside. I've yet to see photographs of that ribbing in place. It would appear the model collect is more correct. And I've just noticed something else while we're talking. Noticed how crisp the detail of this stiffener is here and then how soft it goes here. So that needs some work. Obviously cutting off and replacing with some plastic strip. Um, have a look at this. Rear fuse of our sections. Let's just place them next to each other so the wheel bays line up. So I think we can agree. These fuselage sections look pretty accurate together in width. But as we go back, look how slender the itinerary kit is. And then if we look at the rear pod that mounts on for the gun, look how skinny that is to suit the fuselage. Oh, and they've had to widen the rear fuselage to get the round section in for the Vulcan cannon on the back. So... What do we need to do to correct the itinerary fuselage if we say this one's correct, and I believe it is, to make this one correct? Well, this is quite shocking. This is a, an 8mm piece of tube. This is a 6mm piece of sprue. And if I place a peg on here now, You can see that now the fuselage halves or the fuselage sections pretty much measure up. So that to the say that that means that this area here in the itinerary ANT fuselage is eight millimeters too narrow. And if you follow this line back and you put this in place, you can see that that taper doesn't need to be there. So if you space this out to suit this, you won't have that bulge on the back. And also the area around the top will look better as well. Have a look at references, photographs, drawings, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Right, moving on to the wings, comparing all three. Once again, we've got the AMT, it's an area at the bottom. Model Collect in the middle and the Monogram Revell at the top. Ignore the fact that they're varying lengths, it's just because the, the kit manufacturer has gone about doing the wing route in a different way. Um, the Revell and the Model Collect are very similar. The wing route on the AMT kit, as you're aware, because we'll, we'll cover that, is, the, um, is much wider. So obviously then, hence the wing is shorter. As far as wing location goes, um, Revell wins hands down monogram should I say they have these long tabs which go right across the fuselage and engage into sockets on the opposite side on both so the other side comes in like this and then that and then both sides engage in the opposite side of the fuselage so it makes it a very very strong joint the AMT uh, itinerary has a, uh, a wing section like a, a spar which sticks into the wing about 20 millimeters 25 millimeters which is fairly strong, but it's just a hollow piece of plastic and then you're relying on the, the glue on the joint to hold it. 
the model collect just has a tab um, I actually got the fuselage here so I can show you it just has a tab that goes into the wing so by far this will be the weakest joint of all of them um, I seriously would contemplate adding some metal tubing or something or across to give it a give it some more strength and stability because if you if you pick it up by the wings it's probably going to crack so looking at all three we can see that the AMT it's an airy kit has um, the flaps molded in to the underside and has these spoiler lines here molded in to the upper surface. The model collect has individual flaps and it has some markings here. More of that in a minute. The Revell kit has individual flaps which I've fitted here. There is a reason for that. And also to have individual spoilers on the top. Um, and obviously the A, the, the D version has different, different vortex generators than the G and the H version. This is G, this is H, this is D. So if we look first at the AMT, um, AMT Itinerary, the wing basically comes in two pieces and that is it. That is it. That's all you get. And there is no internal detail in the um, outrigger bay nothing at all covered in sink marks the flaps are molded integrally although black dog now do a kit uh, a resin kit so you can actually cut these out and have opening flaps the engine pylons um, are fitted into slots in the upper wing and the fit is nothing short of terrible absolutely terrible um, if i think of it i'll cover that on another little video um, and as I say, the spoiler lines are here, um, probably correct actually in their position, but they're just literally raised lines. You can hear it's um, there's sort of you know, try and catch it in light. There's they're just sort of raised features that aren't really accurate at all, and they feather out at the back. If we look at the model collect wing. Um, First thing we notice, we have moulded in upper pylon sections, so that's nice. So that's going to be easy to just put the pylons underneath and you'll have a seam here to deal with rather than have to worry about the uh, upper wing surface. You've got the vortex generators here, which are fairly fine. Um, obviously not to scale, moulding them to scale would be impossible. And then we've got the uh, spoiler here across the back, which is, again, it's just a moulded on cone effect. Um, way too coarse and in my opinion it's in the wrong position as well so it should be further back here um, oh one other point on this one it's an H this is for an H kit the H had staggered spoilers so the I think the inner section was forward so um, yeah that's actually incorrect as well on the underside of the model collect we have detail here for the flaps which is not correct um, but you at least have individual flaps but unfortunately there are no tracks for the flaps to run in so you have no choice really other than scratch building something because the flaps come right out as we'll see in a minute and the undercarriage the outrigger undercarriage bay has some uh, detail inside which is very nice also you note the panel lining on this wing um, not sure of its accuracy I have to check but it is very very sharp and very crisp maybe a little heavy but not overly done so here we move on to the Revell monogram uh, wing as we can see we've got the separate spoiler here which is positionable um, the, the instructions suggest that you glue it in closed or open but you could leave like this if you wanted to have positionable if you want to play with your model um, again we have the fitting the um, pylons going over the top of the wing but the fit on these is far superior to the AMT you'll also know the pylons on the D model are a lot shorter than they are on the others um, also we have the vortex generators across the top here again not to scale but moulding them in plastic to scale would be not impossible and also you notice one really nice extra which uh, us modelers love you've got these loops molded into the wing so you can put string through and hang it off your ceiling um, I think that'll be going and you can also see here we've got some sink marks from detail underneath but 
it's a B52 I don't think it's really going to be a problem and the big downside to this kit all over it is the fact that it's got raised panel lines but we must remember this kit is 50 years old yes 50 years old and you know the, these molds have just come through the test of time so well and you can see that even though it's 50 years old whoops even though it's 50 years old the um the manufacturers back then took the time to give you flaps that not only operate oops i mean i don't want to play with my model but it's nice to have them positionable and the detail inside is a lot more accurate as well than the uh, than the model collect kit but you can see that these flaps will hang down quite accurately and uh you know the, the detail on the inside of them may not be perfect but and there's a couple of ejector pin marks but you know it's there they're hanging down they've got tracks to run in you know this by far is better than the others or should i say this is better than the others by far i mean come on guys 50 years old and this is just yeah yeah it's a bit toy like yep yeah, it needs some cleaning up i'm gonna have any room the sprue nibs but um if you want to make a model with your flaps down, which every B-52 stood on the tarmac you know, with power down, would have the flaps down like this. So, um, in fact, they're, they're more down, they're more like that. But, uh, yeah. So there's your comparison of your wings. Um, other than the raised panel detailing, uh, raised panel lines, I think the Revell kit comes out way on top. With the Model Collect being second, but not a close second and AMT being way down the bottom with their well it's garbage really isn't it it's not very good at all right so I've turned the wings up on end now uh, I haven't included the AMT to the airy wing in this because the mating face is, is so much different than these two kits so this is a comparison of the Ravel on the bottom and the model collect on the top and as you can see in this picture, the cord, the, the shape of the wing at the root is different on both kits. Looking at photographs of the real aircraft, it would appear that the Ravel monogram is more correct than the model collect. It's, qu it's, quite, um, it's quite blunt here, whereas you can see the, the Ravel kit is quite sharp. But luckily, there is room for adjustment. Uh, the cord of this wing is slightly shorter than the Ravel, so you could actually add material here to get this shape if you wanted to. Um, or wait for somebody to bring out a conversion that puts a leading edge extension on here for um, the wing root. That will actually give you a correct um, model of the Old Crow Express and also hide this problem. So uh, yeah, you can either modify wait for a conversion or just ignore it just one more thing before i go on the subject of the wings guys um this is the internal surface of the model collect wing and as you can see here's the upper surface they're covered in these large ejector pin marks i think these are called z pins and um it's pretty imperative that when you actually uh before you fit these wings together before you get the glue out check them because this one here you can see it's quite raised and um, it interferes with the fit of the parts so make sure your uh, mating faces are well clear before you start getting the glue out looking at the tail planes now uh, we've got Ravel on the right model collect in the middle AMT Atelieri on the left what I've done here I've lined up the trailing edge and the leading edge with this line across on all of the parts and I've also lined up the corner with the vertical lines you can see here. The reason I've done this is so you can see that if you look at the itinerary panel it's it's further back here meaning the trailing edge forms more of an angle than either the model collect or the Ravel part. The other thing you'll notice straight away is the Ravel and the itinerary AMT are longer than the model collect part. Now I've actually gone from the drawings I've got, and I don't like using drawings, I've made mistakes with drawings before, but looking at the drawings I've got, it looks like the trailing edge of each of these should be 99 millimeters long. 
um, which is just inside these grid lines here. So if we look, we can see the Ravel is slightly too long by about three millimetres, as is the Itinerary AMT one. <clears throat> and the model collect falls short by about three millimetres. Now, you could say that this is probably the most accurate. Um, one being the end shape looks more correct, even though it is slightly too long. The Itinerary one is longer, and the end shape is more correct than the model collect, but we must consider that the fuselage on the AMT Itinerary kit is around about six millimeters too narrow at the back, widening to about eight millimeters too narrow. So if you actually took this part and removed material, so the overall span would come in correct if you actually corrected the inside of this this panel to suit the, the corrected fuselage if you like or if you built it out of the box your overall span would be okay slightly too wide but nothing worse than a Revell kit. This part of here I've um, done some engraving on as you can see and I don't remember why but I've removed two of the vortex generators obviously something somewhere has told me to do this um, I don't know why, because I can't find any images that show those two vortex generators missing. Um, another thing to note is AMT and Ravel are very similar in their moulding. Um, very fine little vortex, nothing like to scale. Uh, if they were to scale, they'd, they'd rub off with your finger. Um, but you'll notice the model collect ones are a bit chunkier and there's less of them. And the other thing to note is every single photograph I've seen of a B-52 tailplane, they all have vortex generators on the upper and lower surfaces. The model collect kit only has them on the upper. This is the lower here and you see there's no vortex generators. And also we can see that on these panels there's some pretty heavy scribing, much heavier than you find on other parts of the kit. So um, that might need a little attention like I did on the, uh, on the B-2. Um, another thing you'll notice on the Itinerary AMT panel, there are some bulges here. Um, I can't find them. Um, th th there's definitely these here which are scribed on other panels, um, on other kits, but I can't find these here and I'm wondering if perhaps AMT have picked up some photographs or indeed seen a real aircraft that's had some repair panels fitted. So I think they probably need to be removed. Neither of the other kits have these. And I certainly can't see them in any photographs I've got. If I'm wrong, please, as I've said before, correct me. I work by drawings and I work for photographs that I've got. I don't have every photograph on the planet. I'm not a B2, B-52 expert and I understand that drawings can often be wrong. Right, now we're going to look at tail fins. Um, now, obviously, I'm not going to compare the Revell kit because it's a D model and it has a tall tail. So it's a completely different shape anyway. But... Um, there's pros and cons with this. The model collect kit is in the front, the AMT itinerary kit is behind. And as you can see, the AMT itinerary kit is much taller than the, than the model collect kit. Uh, looking at drawings I've got, I think the model collect kit, the model collect kit is correct. Uh, it doesn't appear to be this square on the top. Um, but having said that, this model collect kit, look, looking at drawings I've got, the scribing on it is totally fictitious. Uh, I can't find anything that looks anything like this at all. So, yeah, when we look at this, and obviously again, the it's got the uh, ECM blister on here, on the AMT kit, which if you were building uh, Old Crow Express, that would also have it, but it doesn't. So this again proves that this kit is depicting an early B-52G, not a later model. Taking a look at some underwing pylons and stuff now. Um, on the right here I have the AMT kit and on the left is the model collect. I haven't included the Revell in this because it's got different pylons um, for the ammunition. It's got um, AGM-28 pylons. It's got different drop tanks. Um, the A through F had drop tanks and the G and H had uh, permanent tanks. 
that apparently were mainly used more for ballast than extra fuel capacity, particularly in the um, H models with the uh, upgraded engines. And we'll look at the engine pylons in a second. But the first thing I notice here when I look at these parts is the, the fact that all of the AMT parts have some engraved detail. Um, whether it be correct, incorrect, oversized, I don't know. But there is some detail on them. Whereas the model collect parts have nothing. The other thing I noticed when I started taking these parts off the sprues, and I've just spent the last 10 minutes trying to see if there is a difference in the G and the H models. I can't find one. Um, as, I get, as I say, I'm not a B52 expert. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But as far as I'm aware from what I'm reading, the G and the H should have the same external wing tanks, uh, both 70 gallon. This one is 20 millimetres longer and three millimetres bigger in diameter than this one. And look at the drawings I have again. I know drawings cannot always be correct, but looking at the drawings I have, it would appear that this is spot on. So that means this one is way, way out of scale. You can also see that it's very, very shiny, no engraved detail, nothing really much to look at. Now, the other thing I've been trying to find out is, I know the H model had different engines. Did it have completely different pylons or did you just modify the bottom end? What I did find of interest was the H model, all eight engines are different. Um, they all have different parts. They each have their own position on the aircraft. And uh, it's surprising they did it that way. You'd have thought for field maintenance they'd have made them all the same. Um, <clears throat> so looking at the model collect engine pylons, First you can see here's the itinerary ones with the engraved detail. Again, model collect, nothing at all, no detail, nothing at all. Very, very shiny. And I also notice there is no um, connection points or any features on the wing that allow you to fit these parts. Here's the underside of the wing. And you can see that you've got the, the pylons already molded into the top, which is nice, but there's nothing, nothing at all to line the engines up on the wing which um, I found quite surprising, but uh, nonetheless. Um, so yeah, the other thing I was looking at the, that concerned me is these pylons are both raised at the back and these have a, a, a point on the inboard and a raised lump on the outboard. Um, <clears throat> then I looked at the kit again. The AMT kit has very deep recesses in the wings. So basically this will end up with a point and this end up slightly raised. So uh, that's why they're like that. But uh, nonetheless, there should be some sort of scribe detail on here. And unfortunately, there's nothing. And one more thing on the subject of engines, it wouldn't be fair to compare the kits. Um, the Ravel kit has a different engine to the G kit. Well, it's the same engine, different variant to the G. And then the H kit, we know the itinerary engines are too small anyway. So comparing you know, different parts with wrong parts is just pointless. So um, I'm not sure about the accuracy of the model collect engines. Dimensionally, they're very similar to the Revell engines. So if the cowlings are supposed to be the same sort of size and we know the Revell engines are pretty accurate, then model collect have at least got the engines right. Undercarriage. Um, it's nice to get the camera down and look at some sensibly sized parts for a change. So we'll start off by looking at the carriage legs at the bottom. We've got the itinerary AMT on the right, model collect in the middle, and the um, Revell monogram on the left. The itinerary parts for the undercarriage legs are lovely. You can see that all three manufacturers have gone different ways about how they fit them to the kits. The Revell monogram is a complete unit that just bolts into the side of the, or glues into the side of the fuselage. The model collect, if you look back in my box review, you'll see how that fits it. It's kind of a complete frame that goes around the complete inside of the fuselage, which is um, quite a nice touch. It's going to be a very strong, strong built up area. And then you've got the Itinerary um, AMT, which is a bit of half and half. Moulding on the Revell part is a little soft, only to be expected for something 50 years old. But um, it's all there and it's uh, it does the job. The... <clears throat> Model collect part, straight away a little disappointed. We've got a, a, a huge sink mark here and there's a, a recessed ejector pin there. So that's going to take some sanding, filling, whatever you want to do. And I don't get what these two lumps here are. These two lumps at the top 
they're part of the steering mechanism they're like a hydraulic cylinder that sort of push to you and pull to me actually steers the steers the wheels um i don't get that when you turn it over on the other side there's this the um the torque levers or oleos whatever you want to call them they fit in here and it's the the those hydraulic rams work on that that actually steers the, the bottom there should be some um chrome hydraulic shaft exposed here from the undercarriage but there appears to be sort of pretty much nothing really the amt itinerary um has got the two rams there got the bit of chrome part there exposed you've got locations on the back where it does have the um the actuators going on there's also a rod that goes up i think between here so i think all in all the for accuracy and finish i think this one comes out on top looking at the tires now um the AMT tires are around about the 19 millimeters. These are about 19.5 and these are about 20. Um, I say about because they've all got a bit of flash around the outside. So once you've actually built them up and sanded them down, they're, they're all going to be roughly the same. Although these are, you know, roughly a millimeter bigger than these. Um, detail on the, on the surface. Um, if we compare all three together in the same shot. I can get them all in the same shot um, we can see that the one of the advantages model collect have got here is the color of their plastic this sort of primer gray shows detail up a lot better than the other two so if these were all sprayed in a gray primer I think they would look quite similar although the um, the, the, the tread well it's not existent all of them really so I'm not even going to comment on the tread um, and then we've got the outriggers and I'll put these three together as you can see here the Revell part becomes integral with the, the outrigger leg um, but the detail in the center is pretty much correct the AMT one the wheel looks a little small giving it the, the, the tire a very bulbous appearance the model collect one is just wrong um, nothing right about that at all Um, but if we bring in the bad boys, this is the true detail set. Uh, and as you can see, on all four of these tyres, we've got bulge bottoms, ooh, misses, um, which is slightly more accurate than the others. None of the others have uh, any bulged bulging at all. Um, you can see the details very nice, and you've also got some detail around the, the centre caps, which you don't get on the others. The outriggers by far are superior to any of the kit parts from any of the manufacturers. And then you've got the brake detail on the back, which is very nice. Although saying that the model collect and the AMT brake detail, in fact, the Revell as well, rear detail is quite nice. Looking at the back of those, it's, um, it's the same. Moving on to undercarriage bays now. Um, each kit has its different level of detail. I've got the AMT itinerary here on the right, which has been painted zinc chromate. I did this 13 years ago and then put it back in the loft. Um, so, you know, you'll see a lot of this AMT itinerary kit has been started. The Revell kit on the left, um, I actually bought this kit as an experiment for scribing and taught myself basically to scribe with this kit. So uh, then shoved it back in the box and got on with some other stuff. Um, so it's, it's basically come out for these reviews. Um, it's a good mix match actually because we've got a combination of three different styles and to all intents and purposes the AMT itinerary is the only one that's correct. Um, this is the rear bay and this is the front bay. Now you can see the roofs of the bays differ a lot. This one's flat with a lot of structure detail and bits and pieces. This one's got those these digs in it for the wheels to sit in. Um, and it's fairly very simple not a lot going on really and that is actually correct if you check your references the front gear bay is flat roofed the aft gear bay has got these divots in it now Ravel have done the same thing although the divots are way too deep and way out of shape but they've given you this in both the front and the rear gear bays 
plus really i mean this that's all there is you can see way past it so the amt kit is far more complete and once you put the gear bay in you're not going to be able to look down and see through to the back of the fuselage whereas you can with this one the auto collect i've left on the sprues because i don't want to i'm taking so many parts off the sprues i'll end up with a bloody box of bits rattling around but what i wanted to show them auto collect they've gone the other way um they've got a design here which i don't know it's nothing like the others and to be honest i can't see anything much like it in my references but what they have done they've got identical parts for the front and rear undercarriage bays um so certainly for the aft undercarriage they're wrong uh they don't feature these divots in them at all and they don't have a a simple fairly flat uncluttered roof like the original aircraft does so as far as undercarriage bays go it's an area wins hands down moving on to internals now um you'll notice there's a bit of a lack here of any italeri plastic uh that's because it doesn't really have any i'm looking now at the bomb bay and the cockpit the italeri kit comes with no bomb bay at all the the doors are molded into the fuselage so unless you get an aftermarket set from a company called black dog um or square it yourself there's no way you're going to end up with a bombay in the itinerary kit um this is the bombay roof from the Ravel kit and this was originally a snapping panel and would hide the batteries for the monogram uh, electric motor that made the jet engine sound again i say again referred back to my 1968 monogram video for uh for that uh, so yeah very very similar simple half molded bombs but you know let's forgive it it's 50 years old model collect have produced a lovely bomb bay um it's not 100 percent accurate but it's 90 percent there these ridges here these raised ridges they're um they're actually part of the bomb rack system so if you're building a, a b-52 with no bomb racks in it they should be removed this would all be white or off-white and these would be green along with the green bomb racks um, which are the bomb racks are here um, bulkheads are fairly accurate um, there should be something that goes in here there's like a, a, an additional wall i looked in the instructions i can't see it but i could be mistaken this here on the forward bulkhead is looks pretty correct um, th there's obviously a lot more going on if you want to add to it obviously model collect couldn't couldn't do a resin type um, job on it but uh, yeah there's a lot to be added but what's here is is pretty much correct and um, the best out there and in some cases all that's out there these are those frames I was talking about with the undercarriage doors Bombay doors um, lovely no sink marks or anything and if we turn them over we can see there's some internal detail again fairly simple but detail nonetheless, the Ravel has nothing at all. Um, I'm kind of hoping Eddard are going to jump on this. They've never really jumped on the B-52s, but now the Model Collect have done one, they might do a similar job with this as, as they've done with the B-2, and that would be really nice. Um, I just hope they sort of correct stuff rather than just add to what Model Collect have produced. Watch my B-2 uh, build for that. So yeah, so there we go. And the obviously these um, these bulkheads, this one will form part of the undercarriage bay as well. And then we've got the the frames for the rotisserie that the uh, ALCM sit on. So yeah, it's all um, it's all quite nice. As far as cockpit goes, uh, because I've got the model collect frame in my hand, this is the cockpit floor with um, entrance hatch, and you can see centre console here locations for the seats um, we've got the side panels here this is a complete interior side assembly this is two halves the seats go here and here and uh, yeah that's so this is the side console so it's this is a first for me for a 72nd kit they're giving you full interior side wall detail so that's nice um, then we've got the detail here for the lower floor where the uh, navigator sits so you've got the detail for that as well and then you've got this is the lower floor and you've got the navigator seating here i think it's navigator and bombay bon um so yeah so it, it it's all there i'm not sure how much of it's going to be seen
but you know you're going to look up through here and see a certain amount of it um, again this is the only kit out there with um, in the box crew access with a ladder and everything um, again I hope Ed I'll jump on it and um, make the ladder like they did with the B2 because it's a it's a lovely piece of work so staying with model collect here are the ejection seats for the pilot and co-pilot uh, oh they're wrong they've got aces ejection seats um, as you can see they're fairly crispy molded but they really need to go in the spares box because they're wrong um, the B-52 didn't have these seats never did it's got from what I can gather it's a special seat that isn't really used in anything else there's you've got three different types of seats uh, in fact four you've got the ejector seats like this for the pilot and co-pilot that are normal ejection seats that eject upwards there's a simpler version of that seat behind them for the radio guys that sit behind the pilot on the upper floor level they again they eject upwards through hatches in the in the, the roof of the aircraft then you've got different seats underneath for the radio mount navigator that eject downwards and then there's a, a fifth seat which is like um i can't remember they call it a rubble seat i can't remember the it sits in the middle of the uh, cockpit on the uh, here you go in the cockpit floor he sits here and that's just a very simple seat that doesn't eject he has to get up and run out and eject out through the bottom so if you go to the ejection site.com you'll find more information about that it's a very interesting website actually it covers um most aircraft and tells you all about their systems so that's the model collect kit now the revel i'm not even going to bother showing you the seats and stuff because you can imagine from looking at this cockpit floor you can imagine what the seats are going to be like it actually comes with um, pilots as well so um, you can see it's very very basic but you know that's how things were then you remember a lot of the airfix kits had a, a pin sticking out the side of the fuselage that you stuck into the side of the pilot's bum and that was it that was all you got so this was um this was like really going out there in those days so yeah again 50 years old let's forgive it eh? the amt itinerary cockpit i've got one here which i've built years ago and painted um, you can see it comes with a lot of detail which you probably don't need there's a, a bunk here which you're never going to see and then here's the rear radio guys and then the front of the, the co-pilot and pilot seats at the front with the um, decals for the instrument panels and everything so uh, yeah it's not bad the seats are more correct than the model collect although they're not actually dead out right because the the backrest should be more upright and also this headrest should be away from the ejection chute slide things there so you can see the angle on these are like a couple of guys cruising around town in their in their Ford Granada <laughs> or whatever. right so if we look at the uh, painting guides and decals of these three kits now I'll start with the itinerary AMT kit because sure basically because the AMT version I've got here the sheet is absolutely huge um, you can see here it's uh, nearly 18 inches wide and 22 inches long it's massive but they do give you a separate double-sided sheet for the uh, painting guide and it's also nice to see they call the colors out as fs numbers um i wish all manufacturers would do this rather than just pick on one particular brand of paint and then try and get you to cross match it um <clears throat> are you listening guys and then there's also uh, separate instructions on doing the cruise missiles and you can see this is for the um, 1980s scheme which is um, a camouflage scheme um, again they're calling up a tritone color here color scheme um, is it tritone or is it two-tone I don't know um, the references will tell you so yeah that nice big um, colour scheme there. The other thing to note with the AMT kit is there's colour call outs all the way through the instructions for everything and it even tells you that for the 80s scheme the um, bays of certain areas will be zinc chromate and then for the 90s scheme certain areas would be white. So uh, yes yeah, it's, it's nice that they go to the trouble to do that and then turning it over you've got the H for the 19th scheme which is the overall gunship grey colour it's the same aircraft 61040 um, again you've got deck replacements for the uh, missiles and uh, yeah there we go so quick look at the decals for this kit and you can see it's a fairly simple 
fairly small sheet. Um, they don't include any of the walkways or anything which the other manufacturers do. But I mean, to be honest, most experienced models would, would paint them anyway. So um, what a lot of people do is tend to paint the area black or dark grey, then mask it with some three mil tape or whatever, and then do all your painting, all your weather, all your camouflage and everything, then take the tape off um, and it'll expose those lines beautifully underneath. Um, far easier than masking two parallel lines three millimetres apart. So there's the decals for that one. Um, not really that colourful, nothing much to shout about, but of course, you know, after after the Cold War, everything sort of went pretty low vis anyway. So there's that one. Moving on to the Revel, uh, again, black and white, no colour callouts or anything. There's two options for the D. They're, um, they're both Vietnam aircraft, or Vietnam period aircraft, um, both with the um, two-tone camo on the top and then the black underneath. Again, Revel have called out FS numbers. There's no mention of anybody, any manufacturer's paint. We're trying to get, you know, commission or anything, just FS numbers. So we can go and find out our own paints. If we want to use guns, we'll find the match for guns for these colours and we'll go and use them. So, uh, yeah, it's good to know that they, they used to do that and it's a shame they don't anymore. And then you've got on the back here, there's the common decaling for the, uh, the walkways and everything and stencils and stuff. And you can see here that we've got the, um, the uh, Orlando where the action is. Um, the big country bomber they're the two the two different uh, versions available but you can see all the walkways are here and everything but again as I was saying you know putting these down is a nightmare getting them dead straight so probably better off just painting them anyway now we move on to the model collect um, this kit all the way through the instructions has no kind of call outs and at the end with this light glossy paper um, at the end all you get is this there's one scheme all you can build from this kit is the old crow express but actually that's not correct you can't build this model from it or that plane from this model at all because the decals are the only option you get for old crow express but old crow express had the wing fairing routes and agm 28 wing pylons which this kit has neither of. So you can accurately build Old Crow Express from this kit. Oh, and the other thing, Old Crow Express had the extended tail and the um, ECM bumps all over the back end. This kit hasn't got those. So the only way you can build this out of the box, well, I don't think you can build it out of the box as anything realistically, but if you're gonna build it without the pylons on, then you have to build it as one of the early Gs not the later G. So um, yeah, there you go. Unless you want to extend the tail, add the wing fairings and change the wing pylons, then you can build Old Crow Express. Unfortunately, uh, model collectors have gone down the road as all the mother manufacturers are these days and Ammo Mig are obviously, or Ammo by Mig, are obviously paying them to use, to advertise their paints. So what Ammo by Mig does says is, well, hang on, I haven't got the exact colours for this. And I don't really know what they are anyway. So what I'll do is I'll recommend some colours here that will probably look about right. Well, they're not. They're just colours they've got in their range. So what I've done for you here, um, I'll pick this up and zoom in on it. This is what I've done. Now, I'm not going to take any responsibility for this. If you do it wrong, you do it wrong. But this is what I found online. And... Basically, we've got the MIG colours down the left, the FS numbers down the middle that relate to those MIG colours, so you can relate to those on the instructions, and then the um, Mr. Hobby paints here, 305, 301 and 303, that's the aqueous range from Guns. Then we've got Tamiya. Now, for 36118, I found callouts for XF24 and XF50. So make your mind up, it's probably XF50 is more accurate. There's nothing for the 36081, which is just a lighter grey. I, I think there's gonna, there's bound to be something in the Tamiya range, or you could mix it anyway. The things get faded to hell. Um, and then the, the dark green is the XF74. In Vallejo, I found colour callouts. This is what I'm saying about the Tamiya grey. For 36118, I found a callout for 836 or 868. 
well, I also found a call out for 36081 for 836. So, you know, you can see how close it all is. And one of these colours isn't even grey. It's a dark green Vallejo call it. So I don't know what's going on there. And then for the green, you get 830. And then for your Leo model air, 097, 314 and 292. And of course, these have got 71 dash in front of them. And these have got 70 dash in front of them. And again, I'm asking the question here. Is it two tone or three tone camo? Because the colour call outs call for a three tone camo. And then if you look at the camo on the AMT kit, they've got two tone on the top and two tone on the bottom. So you've got a lighter grey on the bottom and a darker grey. And on the top is the lighter grey and the dark green. So, you know, check your references. I'd personally like to build this kit as one of the, um, the G's with the white undersides. So that would be a whole new ball game. But if you're going to build this kit out of the box and you want it accurate, you're going to have to ditch those pylons or get hold of some of the pylons from the Ravel kit or scratch build your own, your own and then get another deco set for it because you cannot build Old Crow Express accurately from this model. Decals, the model collect decals look very nice. I've never used them yet, so I don't know what they're like. I don't know if they're like Tamiya decals and really thick and that. They, they, they look fairly thin. Um, they don't have much carrier film on them and they're all in register. Not too sure about this grey. I think it might be a bit light for the walkways. I mean, this, this grey is going to appear lighter than the, than the green, I think. So um, I'm not sure if that's correct. We'll have to have a look at the references. But... Uh, yeah, it's all there and you, you can read what they're saying, which is good in the 70 seconds ago. It's got all the stencil detail there, all these warning shapes and everything. So, yeah, it's nice. Um, is it correct? I don't know. And then you've got the decals there particular to the Old Crow Express. I've heard some talk about this blue being the wrong colour. I, I don't know. But uh, there you go there. So that's that. So, um, let's have a little talk about these three kits. Right, if you've got this far uh, without falling asleep, congratulations, you've done a great job. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link in the bottom of the video that links you straight to this. But then if you've watched the whole video, it's too late for you to hear that. So, um, let's discuss these three kits. During this whole review, I'm guessing it kind of sounds like I'm coming down pretty hard on the Model Collect kit. To be honest, I was expecting better. But I want to look at these three kits for what they are, and I do a comparison on their accuracy now. We've, we've seen all the mouldings, we've seen the sprues, we've seen the instructions, we've seen decals and colour schemes and, and what else. Let's just quickly have a summary. So, in accuracy, the Ravel is a D model, um, has 213 parts, and from the box you can do two versions. The positives are it has a Bombay of sorts, it has flaps and spoilers on the wings, uh, the shape is very accurate as far as I know, um, the fit is good, um, yeah, it, it's good, and has rather nice decals with the kit from... Um, from Ravel Italy, which I'm guessing are made by Cartograph. The downside to it, it's got raised panel lines. It's fairly simple. Um, there are no clear parts over the top of the cockpit. Uh, if you want to add them, you need to buy an aftermarket vacuum formed uh, screen. Um, but other than that, you know, that's it. It's all round. It's a, she's an old girl now, 50 years old. I'm older than that, but never mind. The AMT kit um, is 25 years old. AMT Irritable now marketed by Itinerary. Um, I can only comment on the H version. There's a G version with the ring root extensions and a G version without. Um, the H version I've got, I've counted it up and I'm making it uh, 146 parts. Um, the positives are it's got scribe panel lines and you can build an H out the box, sort of. Um, negatives, <laughs> here we go. It's a poor shape. Uh, the tail end is all wrong, as you've seen. Um, the wing joints, the actual wing roots are awful. They're like they're in flight, but actually they're not in flight. They're just, they've got loads of dihedral and they shouldn't be there. Um, it has no flaps separate from the wings. It has no spoilers 
although it does have some ridges on the top of the wing that makes it look like it has spoilers there and they're in, in the correct position by the look of it. Um, it has no bomb bay whatsoever. The doors are actually molded into the fuselage and it has a four piece fuselage. So you've got that horrible joint in the middle behind the wings to deal with. And it has a very simple decal sheet, decal sheet, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's that kit overall. Uh, there are more things to note about it, but um, you know, there you go. It's a 25 year old kit. Now the model collect, um, it's the only one that's available at the moment is the G. There's an H coming, an early H and a D, I believe. Um, positives, it has a Bombay, quite a nice Bombay actually. The wing droop is very nice on it. Um, the it has very nice uh, wing roots matings as well. <coughs> Excuse me. It has PE, which is the only kit that has any PE. It has a very nicely detailed cockpit, uh, very nice decal sheet, and it also has separate flaps. But the nose shape is wrong. The wing root shape is wrong. The actual um, shape of the leading edge of the wing I'm talking about is way too fat. The tail end is wrong. It's got a fared over window for a D version. Um, it's nothing like a G at all. It has no flap tracks, so Although it comes with individual flaps with very, very simplistic detail in the bays, there is no way of actually hanging the flaps on there. Come on, Eddard, please come to their rescue. Um, it has an eight piece fuselage. God, so you've got four joins on each side. We've well, got four sections. So that's, um, was that one, two? You've got three joins on each side of the fuselage uh, with a fuselage made up of eight different parts which is a joke. Um, it's the wrong scheme. You can't, the kit that's on the front of the box, you can't build out the box. And the kit that's on the front of the box is not what's in the box. But then AMT are also guilty of this and it's an airy. They show their aircraft on the kit box with flaps down. All of their kits show them with flaps down as far as I know. And the flaps are a part of the wing. You can't take the flaps down unless you cut them out yourselves. Um, very very poor paint guide there are no paint guides all the way through the instructions and the paint guides at the end are uh, model air well not not uh, are ammo by mid colors so uh, yeah great um the seats in the cockpit are wrong they're um they're seats for a fighter for an f-16 or a b2 bomber uh, i believe the b-52 had its own seats and so nothing else used them um panel detail is pretty crisp on the fuselage and on the wings on the tail sections it's a bit big uh, a bit trench like but there's no panel detail on the pylons there's no panel detail on the engines there's no panel lock detail on the external tanks there's it's very very simple it's all very very glossy very very shiny very simple plastic um, you could only build one version from this kit which i think is a downside um, and as I said before, you can't build the, the kit that's on the box. You can't build Okra Express accurately. Um, so, yeah, the kit doesn't have the wing root extensions or the AGM 20, um, 28 pylons, which it should have. So, that's overall comparisons as far as accuracy goes. Buildability. Um, the Revell, I would say, is a very simple build with a two-piece fuselage. So if you're a beginner or you're building this with a little one, um, I think the Revell will give you pound for pound. I think is probably the best value kit of all of them. Um, if you can get one cheap, they they tend to come in and out of the market, and they come in at sort of thirty-five pounds, and then when they go out, they seem to be fetching eighty pounds. So if you can get a cheap one, yeah, I think it's probably your best. You've got the Revell and Monogram, all of them from 1968 to current day. They're all the same kit, pretty much. Um, and a big benefit of it is a two-piece fuselage, which makes it a lot easier to build. The AMT kit, um, it's pretty poor fit, like all AMT kits. And it's got a four-piece fuselage. Um, and with that wing root and everything, it's not very easy to build. It's got very, very soft plastic. I've heard stories of them sagging and stuff. So maybe give that one a miss for beginners. Um, but up until now, it's been the only G&H out of the box you could get. 
and that tail is, uh, if you're after accuracy, that's going to be a big non-starter for most. Model Collect, um, it's the most complex kit, it's the most detailed kit, it's got by far the finest surface detail where there is surface detail, but it has got that awful eight-piece fuselage. Um, for $69.99, I think it's a bargain, which is what I paid for it. So here it goes, which one would I go for? Well, I've got all three, but if I were you, and all you want to do is build a B-52 to have in your display or hang it on your ceiling and you don't care if it's got the right shape nose or the right shape tail or the correct engines or the right pylons or the correct colour schemes or whatever, I would buy the Model Collect kit every day of the week because for $69.95 it's cheaper than you're going to find the Revell kit on eBay probably and it's about £20 more than you'll get the Itinerary kit for. And you're getting a lot more kit for your money than you, when you buy the Itinerary kit. For accuracy, if you're going to build a, a D, go for the Revell, um, the Revell monogram. It's a superb old kit. And other than having raised panel lines, I think it's bloody lovely. So basically, there you go. In a nutshell, if you're after your accuracy, get the Revell. If you want a nice model to build, that's going to look great on the shelf and you don't care about the accuracy get the model collect um, and just one final note i have read on brit modeler that the brit modeler that apparently model collects are going to offer corrections for this kit so i'm hoping they're going to offer me a new nose section a new tail section um a new uh, <laughs> undercarriage bay um, new cockpit seats, um, proper pylons, uh, wing root extensions, or a different decal sheet, or an accurate colour diagram. So, um, yeah, if you listen to the model correct, that's what we need. But uh, I tell you what, guys, just put a little more effort into the H model, please, or the model, next ones you've got coming out. And, I mean, if you can come out with a superb 100% accurate D, everybody's going to be made up. Alright, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you're still awake, hey, well done. Speak to you all soon. Bye.